Hey everybody and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at a very basic post-production workflow for your renders. Before I get started, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed to this channel and hit the notification icon. It really helps the channel grow and it's also a very useful tool for me to see how many people want to see my future content. Also, a massive thank you to everyone who has supported me on Patreon or who has become a member of this channel. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. So let's get stuck into this then. So we've dragged a render into our Photoshop window. So this render has been kind of squared away as much as possible in DAS, but there's always little bits of work that need to be done. And before we do anything else, I need to clear up a couple of points. Firstly, we do everything in Photoshop, we do a maximum resolution. So we don't resize our image until after we've done post-production. This is to make sure that any changes to the texture of the skin or anything like that are done with as much detail as possible. All of the tools in Adobe Photoshop are very, very clever, but the more information we can give them to work with, the better. So the first thing we would probably be doing is getting either our spot healing brush tool or our healing brush tool, which you can access by right clicking on the little plaster icon here in the toolbar. Generally speaking, you want to avoid using the spot healing brush tool if you can by using the normal healing brush tool. This just means that you're taking control of the texture of the skin or whatever it is that you're changing and you're not leaving it up to Photoshop to make that decision for you. So I spotted that we've got a couple of black lines in the eyes here which may or may not be intentional, but I don't like them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to select a sample by clicking on the eye here. Now, what I must remember to do is to create a new layer. Everything we do is non-destructive editing. So we click on this little plus symbol here to create a new layer. So everything we do is going to apply on a separate layer. So with our healing brush tool selected, we need to come up to the top and we need to select all layers. So we hold down Alt and we click on the mouse and now we've got a sample of a texture and then we're gonna drag over the top of the area that we want to remove, remembering to do it little by little so that we don't accidentally go over the eyelash or another part of the eye that we don't necessarily wanna sample the texture from. And as you can see, that's actually made you know there's no artifact so you wouldn't know that you had done that in post and this is kind of putting paid to all those myths that editing your images in post makes it look too obvious that you've done it and all that sort of thing the whole point of every technique we do in photoshop is so that the person viewing the photo doesn't know we've been there and that goes for real photographs as well as renders when you're editing a photograph you're retouching you want to leave as little evidence as possible that you were there. It needs to look completely real. So here we go again, out click to sample and then paint over the area like so. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of a dark patch appearing here where the dark from the eye line has sort of bled into our eye. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna quickly finish off what we started there. And then we're going to fix that. And then we're going to do that by using the clone stamp tool, which is this tool here that looks like a little stamp. And all we're going to do is make our tool nice and small by pressing the left square bracket key. We're going to hold that out and we're going to click. And that's now created a sample here. And now all we're going to do is just apply that. And then we can undo and redo as much as we need to we can adjust the opacity if we think it's too high. See, for me, that's a bit high. I normally work in the vicinity of the kind of 30 to 50% region, so maybe 40% for today. And I always have my flow set at 50% or thereabouts. And that means then once we paint over, as you can see, just by clicking multiple times, we can remove and then we can resample if we need to from another place nearer to the 
area that we're clicking and there you go we've removed that strange dark artifact that was there so now we're going to press Control 0 so we can see the whole image again as you see like you wouldn't know that those eyes had been interfered with in post-production and those are the two kind of main techniques I use for removing uh, little artifacts and big poke through spots are all the same remember that this isn't a person in front of a white wall with wall with another person there these are just pixels these are pixels that have position and color and that's all they are so all we're doing is manipulating these pixels to better represent the subject so you know try to get the three-dimensional shapes out of your mind so that you can just see the artifacts and the noise for what it is and it's just pixels that are the wrong color and all we're doing is making them the right color and moving them around to make sure that they're better so other things that we can do is we could maybe adjust the overall exposure and contrast of the image if we weren't happy with what we had actually i'm quite happy with the exposure for this image and because it's part of a series of images if you change one you need to remember that you're going to change all of them but for the purposes of demonstration what we can do is this little half moon here we're going to click on that and then we're going to choose a curves layer i tend to avoid going too near to the actual brightness and contrast if i can so we can adjust the contrast in this we can either reduce it by perhaps dragging the highlights down and dragging the shadows up which gives us that kind of matte effect that a lot of people seem to crave um, claiming that it looks more photorealistic i'm inclined to disagree the human eye has a much higher dynamic range than a computer monitor and by reducing the, con the contrast all you're doing is making it look less contrasty so we can change the highlights and the shadows we can move those around to increase the contrast and then we can drag our midtones up or down if we want to and you can do this in various different places you can really interfere with some interesting looking effects i'm going to delete this layer in a minute anyway because i don't really want more contrast in the image it was pretty good as it was so that's one thing that we can do um so if i want to delete that layer if i'm not happy with it i can just click on the layer in the layer palette and hit delete if i feel like it's a bit too undersaturated i can add a hue and saturation layer perhaps if i wanted her lips only to be a little bit more saturated i could drag the saturation up by maybe 14 points press ctrl and i to invert the layer mask then i can grab a paintbrush I'm using a square bracket so we make the mouse the uh, cursor the correct size and then opacity and flow don't really matter at this point you can just paint over the area that you want to be more colorful if that's what you want like so and then you can see that the thumbnail for the layer mask has changed and you can paint over it as many times as you need to perhaps you want to make the eyes a bit more colorful as well so just paint over those like so and then you've got slightly more colorful lips and eyes and you can obviously drag those up to make it really extremely noticeable or not uh, again i'm quite happy with the colors in this image so i'm just going to remove that layer like so now tips on things to definitely not do in adobe photoshop and as i recommend in the same with daz studio never use the denoiser because it does remove detail now this image is 2880 pixels wide so when i reduce this to 1080p resolution a lot of the noise will be removed which is a technique that we call manual oversampling by making the image bigger than we need it to be and then reducing it afterwards um, generally speaking i wouldn't bother trying to compress this image in any way in photoshop we use other programs for that which make it much more quick and efficient really in this all you're looking to do is remove any flaws 
check any weird lighting or anything like that. For example, if you find an area is too overexposed relative to the rest of the image, let's say I wanted to make her hand perhaps, make that a little bit more dull, just so that it didn't stand out as much. If I felt that that were a case, I could just drag down the midtones in a curved layer like this, invert the layer mask, select my paintbrush, make it a little bit larger, and then just paint over the area that I wanted to darken like so. And obviously because you're seeing me do it, you can see the change. So your eye isn't going to be fooled. But if I was to close down this image and reopen it again, you wouldn't notice that at all. You would, your eye wouldn't be telling you that something had changed. So again, I don't need to do that because I'm quite happy with the end result but as you can see that makes quite a significant difference don't use the denoiser at all in daz render the image completely so that there's as little noise as humanly possible and just render it at high enough resolution that when you shrink it down the noise disappears anyway i hope you found that useful let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye